Good day, folks, and welcome to the Anorak Review Show, with I, your host, the Anorak. Yes, it's yet another top list video again, because, hey, I'll look for any excuse to catch back up to my weekly schedule so the episodes can go out back on time again. And hey, this one's actually about music. Sort of. It's more or less about something that I've been wanting to bring up in a while. Feature film ad adaptations of concept albums. There had been quite a few over the decades, some of which I may have already reviewed, and some I may plan to review sometime down the road. But here, I want to list off a few albums that I wish were and think should be adapted into such films. So, let's not waste any further time. Although, I still usually do anyway, because, let's face it, I can be a bit of a procrastinator. And I am. This is the top five albums that should be made into films. Kicking off the list at number five is Lifehouse by The Who. Now, this one's at the bottom of my list since technically this album never got fully made or completed, instead of being reworked into Who's Next, which I had already reviewed. That said, there was something of a story idea behind it, and there had been a few attempts of trying to revive the concept, like when Who guitarist Pete, T Pete Townshend tried to revive it as Lifehouse Chronicles and Lifehouse Elements back in 2000. Plus, both Tommy and Quadrophenia each had their own film adaptation. So, if there's enough interest and demand, I could see Pete and maybe some of the other surviving Who members bringing back such an old rock opera idea into a big feature film. Maybe a proper album as well. At least one of the few variations of it. Yeah, there have been apparently some different versions of the Lighthouse concept thought over over the years. And I wondered why such a thing didn't exactly get off the ground back in the day. And number four is Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. Now, this one technically isn't a concept album per se, but the other previous three albums have each had some form of sort associated with them. Homework had D.A.F.T, a story about dogs, androids, firemen, and tomatoes, which is pretty much an anthology consisting of the music videos of the singles. Discovery had Interstellar 5555, the story of the secret star system, or technically, the five toy of the five equid five tar five eastum, which had the whole album in sci-fi anime form, and Human After All had Electroma, which utilised no songs at all from the album, and ironically, this film started out as a music video for the titular track before being expanded upon. Not to mention, Random Access Memories is technically the longest album they made, more so than Discovery, and even slightly longer than Homework. So its 74 minute runtime would make it justifiable for a feature length. On top of that, a similar theme that Electroma and Interstellar 5555 seem to share, to an extent, is that of non-human beings, be it alien or robot, becoming human, whether by force or by will. And I could see such a theme being utilised explored further here in a potential hypothetical film version of Ram. I'll probably go into bit into more depth into such themes once I actually get around to reviewing Human After All and Random Access Memories next year or so. But as of now, I hope the departed duo of Tomas and Guy Manuel would give their blessings at least. At number four are A Momentary Lapse of Reason and A Division Bell by Pink Floyd. Of course, I found it quite tricky to choose either one or the other that I'd prefer, so I just put them both into a tie, as I do. I put them here mainly because the prior two Pink Floyd albums have had their own film, sort of. The Wall, of course, did in 1982, starring Bob Geldof, Hater of Mondays, 
and directed by the late great Alan Parker, who also directed Fame, Birdie, and Evita. While the final cut had a quote-unquote video EP, which only features a few selective tracks from the album, and stars Alex McAvoy, who also played the teacher slash schoolmaster from the Wolf film. No doubt playing the same, the very, very same character here, revealed to be a World War II veteran. Oh, and by the way, would it be in some ways inaccurate or not to consider that Final Cut film to be Pink Floyd's equivalent of a straight-to-video slash direct-to-DVD sequel? While not as centralised in terms of themes and concepts compared to most other Floyd albums, Memory True Lapse and Division Bell could have deserved a film each, generally being about what happened with Pink himself after his metaphorical wall had been torn down at the end of the Wall album, many years later. How he sees the world now, how he coped, how he manages to fit back into society, what happened with his music career, etc. While Final Cut, Momentary Lapse, and Division Bell weren't exactly intended by the band members to be actual proper sequels to The Wall and his narrative, it's still interesting nonetheless to think about. At number 2, OK Computer by Radiohead. Now this is an album where, with its general themes and moods, that I could definitely see having a film of some kind. I can imagine this being in a near future or alternate present time where it's a dingy, almost dystopian world with an eerie and uneasy atmosphere to it. Similar to 1984, Brave New World, Children of Men, and Serial Experiments Lane. Perhaps it could focus on a particular Winston Smith-esque main character or even a small group of characters, with a song or two from the album representing each, like one feeling as paranoid as an android, and another being a member of the Karma Police, all dumbed down by the dark and sinister robotic voice of Fitter Happier. It would have made a decent and interesting insight into how far society and cultures can go to the point of dehumanizing people and mankind, drained of any and all empathy and emotion until we're all infected with apathy. Now that's a grim, gritty, and scary future. And finally, at number one, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway by Genesis. Now, I'm sure this isn't a surprise at all to most people, especially old school fans of Genesis. And the most interesting thing, however, is that this was actually intended to be adapted to film at some point, with William Friedkin offered the directing chair for it already then fresh off his success with the classic 1973 horror film, The Exorcist. However, for vague reasons, that wouldn't exactly come through, and William went on to direct the film Sorcerer in 1977. And it's still a bit of a shame here, since his sense of direction, camera work, and atmosphere, not only seen in the likes of Exorcist, but also in stuff like Cruising, The Boys in the Band, and The French Connection, would have matched perfectly with the strange, surreal, and almost supernatural visuals that the music and lyrics of the Lamb album have to offer, especially since said album was partially influenced by a few films and musicals as well, like El Topo and West Side Story, so it could have come very well full circle. But if anyone out there wants to get and see an idea of the closest we'll probably ever get to what the story of The Lamb Lies Down would be like made visual, there's an artist on YouTube named Nathaniel Barlam, who managed to translate the whole album and its songs into illustrated motion form, as well as doing stuff like Supper's Ready, David Bowie's Life on Mars, among other stuff. There's a link to the video and his channel within the description, so there's my shout out to him there. And that seems to be it for this little video. It may seem a bit short compared to most other episodes of mine, but I guess you consider this my equivalent of Linkara's comic book quickies or something, perhaps. So, but well, it's all to you. What albums, concept or albums or otherwise, would you like to see be made into a film or a TV show? 
and what ideas would you have for such? Feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. Next time, we go a bit, bit further detail on about one of the albums I mentioned on this list, and I'll let you take a guess which one it'd be.